Well, hey there, native plant enthusiasts. This is Santino, education coordinator for Bowens Hill Wildflower Preserve, coming at you with another nature note. Before we begin, I wanna take a quick moment to thank everyone for your continued support of this series. Uh, if you're enjoying it, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our content. While you're down there, click the thumbs up button, give it a like, um, as well as in the comment section below, uh, share your thoughts and feelings. We always love to hear from you. Remember, interacting with these videos is a fantastic way to support the preserve, and it's also free, my favorite price, right? So um, again, thank you all for your support, continued support, and this is a great way to continue to share how important native plants are uh, to the world. So for today's mystery native plant, we're gonna highlight another member of the Heath family. As the pinkster and flame azaleas fade for the season, um, a really cool new plant comes into its own. It's one of my favorites, as you might have guessed. Um, this plant blooms with clusters of pink and white flowers, uh, white flowers with pink pollen, um, which look really, really cool. Um, and its blossom is hexagonal, so clusters of hexagonal white blossoms. Um, it is very well known for its large flat foliage. Um, you will find this plant typically growing in rocky mountainous outcroppings, um, and it prefers soils of slightly higher acidity. We're looking at a pH of about five. What is this mystery native plant? It's the mountain laurel. And if you're unfamiliar with the mountain laurel, um, you should be as it's the state flower of Pennsylvania. And it was uh, given that honorary distinction by Governor Gifford Pinchot back on May 5th, 1933. Now, at the time, the General Assembly set a uh, past bill for two different native plants to be our state flower. Those included the Pinkster Azalea and the Mountain Laurel, and Governor Gifford Pinchot chose the Mountain Laurel. And, you know, it's a really cool plant, so it's a great one to pick. Now, the Mountain Laurel typically grows between 4 to 10 feet tall, although specimens have been recorded of it growing up to 40 feet and is one of the only broadleaved evergreens native to Pennsylvania. Regarding its name, which is Calmia latifolia, it got the name Calmia after a Finnish explorer, Pierre Kelm, who sent Linnaeus samples while he was doing his classification. And the species name latifolia refers to the broad leaves of the plant. Now, mountain laurel is not a true laurel, despite the name. It's not a Lauraceae family member, but instead it's a member of the Ericaceae. Um, the name mountain laurel for, you know, its preferred habitat, which uh, is where you likely find this plant. And the laurel is likely a reference to the leaves of the bay laurel. Now, you might be familiar with bay laurel leaves as they are traditionally used in cooking. Now this plant, the mountain laurel, is a widely popular plant in the nursery trade. Uh, there are over 75 different cultivars that have been developed of this plant, and that popularity is no more apparent than back in the 1920s, when it is estimated that nearly 20 million pounds of its foliage were harvested uh, for holiday decorations. In fact, in 1913, the New York Botanical Garden published a small um, booklet of a variety of plants that needed to be protected and mountain laurel made the list of one of 14 different species. Now, if you're up for a road trip um, or are near the town of Wellsboro, Pennsylvania, they celebrate the blooming of the mountain laurel uh, every year and the Pennsylvania State Laurel Festival this year runs from June 11th through the 19th. So if you're free and available, that's worth checking out. Now, one of the things that makes this plant one of my favorites is it's a very interesting and unique pollination strategy. Most plants have their anthers or their male reproductive parts exposed to the elements, um, allowing their pollen to be sloughed off at the slightest provocation. However, the mountain laurel, uh, when it blooms, you'll notice that it develops these almost club shaped. Um, it develops in like a club shape with these knobby structures surrounding the bud and uh, the anthers, as the flower opens, are held back in those little knobs and pulled back under tension. When a pollination partner, likely a bumblebee, uh, comes to visit, they trigger that little, uh, the anther, bringing it into action, kind of like a pollen-laden catapult. And this leads to the insect being forcefully bashed by pollen. 
Um, it always makes me chuckle. Like, I kind of think like the plant says, ah, you will, you will pollinate me. And again, this always gives me a good chuckle. All right, friends, that's just about it for me today. If you want to check out the mountain laurel for yourself, you can see it, of course, here at the new pond. Um, the other images in this video were taken right near our entrance gate. So as you enter the preserve or once you park, uh, take a pop over back towards that gate. And you can check it out there. Um, again, if you like this content and want more of it, again, like, commenting, sharing, subscribing, all go a long way to help the preserve and spread the message of the importance of native plants to our planet. Uh, and as always, I encourage each and every one of you to keep on experiencing what's natural and learn what's native. Take care.